Hi, in this video we're going to be discussing the common components that make up a computer. So if you're looking to maybe build your own computer or you want to get into the uh, computer field and want to know the basics of what comprises a computer, this might be the uh, video for you. All right, so first we're going to talk about the motherboard or main board as it's also known. So this is the main circuit board that connects all components allowing communication between the CPU, RAM, storage, and peripherals, which are other devices such as, you know, sound card, network card, and that type of thing. All right, so we could see in the picture here that we have a motherboard, and these are the connections on the back that you will see in the back of the case, you know, USB ports, network ports, video ports, and so on. And then we have our CPU slot here. So this might vary a little depending on what brand of CPU you are using. Then we have some RAM slots here, and it looks like we have some here. They're kind of hidden. And then we have our slots for our peripherals, such as the video card and sound card, like I mentioned. So these are most likely going to be PCI or PCIe slots. And then we have other miscellaneous connections, like the uh, power connection here. And then we'll have some uh, connections for the USB controller that connects to the front and the rear of the computer for your USB ports. And then you'll also find some SATA connections for your drives and so on. All right, so now we'll talk about the CPU, Central Processing Unit, or processor, as it's also known. So this is the brain of the computer that performs instructions and processes data for all tasks. So in this example here, we have an Intel i7. So here's the top, here's the bottom. Uh, so these are actually pins sticking out. You can't really tell from the picture. But they will actually get placed into here, and that'll be clamped down to secure it to the motherboard. And then over to the right here, we have a heat sink with a fan. So this heat sink sits on top of the processor. Then you'll have some thermal paste in between to help out with cooling. And then the fan blows down on it to keep it cool. And then this power connection will connect into the motherboard to provide power. And of course, you know, there are AMD processors as well. And there are varieties of different types of processors for both brands. And of course, there are other types of processors as well. But, you know, the AMD and the Intel are the most commonly used. All right, so now we have RAM, random access memory, not to be confused with the memory storage on your hard drive. A lot of people get that confused. So this is temporary memory that stores data for quick access while the computer is running, helping programs and tasks run faster. So every time you open a file or a program, it'll be opened in your RAM memory. And then when you close the program or file, it gets released from the memory. But one thing you may notice is that when you open a bunch of programs or files, you may start to run low on RAM. And then even if you close them, it may not free up as much as you'd like. And in that case, you could just do a quick reboot and that'll flush out the RAM and you'll be starting fresh. So it's always a good idea to reboot your computer, you know, at least maybe once a week if you like to leave it on all the time. And there are also third-party apps that could actually clear out memory for you. So we did a video on one of them. So you might want to check that out. And then one thing you'll notice here is this RAM chip or DIMM as it's also known. Uh, you can see it's exposed with the uh, microchips showing. And then you can see here on the label, if you could read it, it says it's a DDR5 memory. So this memory is the same, it just has a plastic cover on it. So you can see it still has the same connection down here, which goes into the slot on the motherboard. We go back here right in here, and you can see it's notched as well, so it only goes in one way. All right, let's move on. All right, hard drives. So st these are storage devices that hold the operating system, programs, and user data. So you install, let's say, Windows, for example, on the hard drive. You install your programs on the hard drive, and your files are kept on the hard drive. So over here on the left, we have a spinning disk hard drive with the platters inside of it. So this is exposed. You won't see it like this. It'll have a cover on it. So these spin at a high rate of speed, you know, 5400, 7200 revolutions per minute. And then this head here reads and writes the data to these platters at a very high rate of speed. And then in the back, you have your connections for the motherboard and for power. So this is a SATA drive, for example. You can see the SATA connections here. And then over here on the right, we have how it really looks with the cover on it like so. And then on top of this we have a 
SSD drive, solid state drive. So this is a flash drive. It doesn't have any spinning parts. So therefore it'll be faster and no spinning parts to break. But it doesn't mean it's bulletproof though. These could still fail as well. And these often use SATA connections just like the uh, spinning disks. And they're going to be a little more expensive for the same capacity. Then on top of that we have an NVMe drive. So this might look like a stick of RAM but it's actually a hard drive. And this end here goes into a specific slot on your motherboard. So your motherboard has to support it to use it. So this is an M.2 configuration. So this is 512 gigabytes. So these will be even more expensive. And you will not be able to get them in as large of a capacity as you will with the spinning disk. You know, these could get 8, 10, 12, you know, terabytes or whatever. Whereas uh, these, this is only a 512 gigabyte. This is a 2 terabyte right here. Now we have video cards or GPU. So video cards, they handle the rendering of images, video, and 3D graphics. It is essential for gaming, graphic design, and video editing. So most motherboards will have built-in video. So if you're not doing anything like playing intense games or photo or video editing, it should be fine. But if you are a gamer or serious video editor, then you probably want to have a standalone card like this. And you can see the connection here, which will go into one of these slots right here. And then it'll, you know, be sticking out the back here where you could plug in your monitor. All right, so this particular video card has four different ports on it. It has an HDMI, uh, two display ports, and a USB-C. So here we have a closer look at what they look like. USB-C, display port, HDMI, and then these two, DVI and VGA, these are typically found on older video cards or older motherboards. So you'll still see them, but not as often. seems like HDMI is probably the most common right now. And of course, your monitor has to have the same type of connection to be able to connect to it. You can do adapters for some of these, like a, a DVI to VGA or VGA to DVI, if you need to do something like that. All right, now we have the power supply, or PSU. So this converts electricity from an outlet into usable power for the computer's components. So when buying a power supply for building your own computer, you have to take into account what kind of other hardware you're going to have in there, such as a high-end video card, for example. You're going to need a better power supply to go along with it. When you buy a pre-built computer, they usually do a pretty good job of matching the power supply with the components. But then again, if you're going to be upgrading your pre-built computer, you might have to upgrade your power supply. So this will have various connections to plug into the motherboard, uh, into your drives, and so on. So this connection here is what we saw right here. And then even on the video card, on the top here, you'll have a separate power connection specifically for the video card, you know, to run the fans and all that. All right, then we have network interface cards or NICs as they're also known. All right, right here we have an internal card. So this will connect to the motherboard in this slot here. And then I'll have an ethernet port with some link lights to tell you the status of the connection. You could get them with multiple ports too if you want, but this is just a simple single port one. And then here we have an internal wireless card. So this will connect to the motherboard and these antennas will be sticking out the back of the computer for your wireless connection. You don't see these too often, but they are still out there. So if you do not have wireless capabilities in your computer, then the best bet is to go with one of these USB wireless adapters. You could just plug it into any USB port and they actually, you know, give some pretty good speed and you could probably get them for $25. So they're pretty cheap as well. And then finally, we have this internal wireless card here. So if you have like a desktop computer that has built in wireless, it most likely has one of these that connects to a special slot on the motherboard. And then these could also be replaced if they go bad. All right, and now we have a picture of a computer built with the cover off the case. So here's the motherboard. You can see this is a small motherboard because there is a lot of room for a larger motherboard. So if you needed some additional slots for other components, you could do a larger motherboard. And then we have the power supply here with the cables connecting to the motherboard. And then we have a hard drive here with the power connections. And then we have some room up here for additional drives or maybe a CD or DVD drive as well. And of course you have your cooling fans, 
This one looks like it just has one. Oh, there's actually one there too as well. So of course cooling is very important, especially if you're running a high-end video card. You need to make sure you have uh, good cooling. And I also wanted to mention when building your own computer, you need to make sure the CPU and the RAM will work with your motherboard. You know, there are specific specs for the RAM, you know, like DDR4, DDR5, the speed, and so on. And then same for the processor. It has to support that specific processor. Most motherboards will support, you know, various processors. So you're usually okay. And then for RAM too, it's, you know, it's not that hard to find one that'll work with it. All right, so there is your basic overview of common PC hardware. So hopefully it made sense and hopefully you have a little better understanding of how it all works. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.